ladies and gentlemen, please meet Derek Taylor. Hey everyone, I'm Derek. Um, I'm here to discuss an idea I have for getting local furniture makers together in a collaborative project. Uh, but first, I think I'll talk a little bit about my travels and how they led me to be standing here tonight at this podium. Uh, back in 1991, uh, this was my junior year at RISD, uh, and this is really when I knew it crystallized for me that I loved making furniture. It was only the second piece that I had ever made, but I was really forever hooked. Uh, graduate school in the mid-90s was more, for me, about making furniture that didn't take itself so seriously. So what this is is an almost Rube Goldberg-esque set of jewelry boxes that spin around on a Ferris wheel. <laughs> That's my left hand, and you can probably see in, in the slide, uh, arthritis has kind of screwed up my middle finger on that hand. Um, back in 1995, developing arthritis kind of put to an end my furniture making career, at least for the time being. Uh, it also makes it very hard to flip people off. <laughs> this isn't a blank slide. This represents my soul. Uh, <laughs> I, I, had to, I had to forge ahead with a non-creative career uh, in order to pay the bills. Um, but luckily that career brought me to Maine in 2004, and I came here to work on the MLTI project with Apple. Uh, but in 2008, I went to Haystack, and if you haven't been there, go. It's the most amazing place in the world. Um, but it was a reawakening. It was a reawakening that I needed to make time for creativity. I needed that space in my life. Um, and this is the chair, or excuse me, the table that I made while I was there. Um, it got me thinking about other projects that I wanted to do. But at heart, I realized that I knew very little about other furniture makers in the Portland area. Um, it's kind of an optical illusion. Those wooden spars don't actually touch each other. They're all held together with tension and compression. Uh, lately, I've been working on prototypes for this uh, lamp design business that I'm going to launch soon. Um, the lampshade in this is made by laminating Wall Street Journal stock quotes uh, <laughs> over a form in a vacuum press. Um, I just really enjoy the, the patterns that the stock uh, quotes and the numbers make. I also love the chair as an object. Um, this recent work uh, was a deconstruction of the chair in the sense that it bolted together three different design aesthetics. Um, but as a structural exercise, it also informed what I'm about to talk to you about. Uh, and yes, those are about 75 different yardsticks that are bent and glued together to form the seat. Um, <laughs> Maybe it's, maybe it's just me, but I don't see a lot of exposure for Maine furniture artists. <laughs> so I started thinking about collaborative projects to stir things up. I don't know how many of you have heard of, of layer tennis, but basically it's a group of two graphic designers who volley Photoshop files back and forth to each other, taking five rounds each. And at the end, someone is declared a winner, mostly so that the first round of drinks is bought by the loser. <laughs> so I thought, well, why not chair tennis? Um, th this just makes a ton of sense to me. You, all you need is a starting point, a, a backbone, a chair spine, if you will, and then artists could take turns bolting on components onto this backbone. And the first artist might add the front legs to the steel backbone. Uh, they'd have a week to complete their turn, and then when they were done, they would deliver the result to the paired artist that lived nearby. And then the second artist, when they receive it, might just lop off a whole leg if they wanted to, and add on other pieces, <laughs> and do some surface embellishment, and add a backrest, and maybe even start some old school, new school call and response war uh, somehow. In the next slide, you're going to see six different artists interpreting what a chair can be. Um, 
they're expanding the notion of, of, of what a chair is, but just imagine the moments of serendipity that would occur uh, in a collaboration between two artists. And in my mind's eye, I can see chair tennis looking like the chair on the left. That's by an artist, uh, Jay Stanger. He made that back in 1993. Or maybe it looks like Russian constructivist sculpture, or maybe nothing at all like this. Um, the idea here isn't about you or me. It's about letting go of control and seeing what happens. Maybe you have a ton of extra material in your studio that you want to use up. Or maybe before you die, you want to learn how to do lost wax casting. The, <laughs> This is a great opportunity for exploring new processes and stretching creatively. And those of you under 30 won't get this joke. When we're done, all the artists that had finished their chair collaborations uh, could get together and we could put on a show. <laughs> this, the same artists could also display other examples of their work uh, at the same time, garnering some needed exposure. So for now, what I'm looking for uh, are some folks willing to submit some digital examples of their work, uh, and then I'll take the uh, chair tennis idea and bring it around to some galleries. So please see me after all the presentations over, are over if you're interested, and I'll gladly give you one of my business cards. Um, but perhaps you know someone that's a furniture maker, um, and you want to tell them about this idea and, and get them to see what, what you saw. Uh, my website, lamplabs.com, has a, a tab up at the top uh, uh, where you can find a stashed copy of this presentation um, if you want to share it with anyone. And that's it. Thank you so much.